Hello everybody and welcome back to Path to Platinum, the series where getting trophies never looks so easy. Today we're going to be taking a look at the newly released Resident Evil Village. Being a huge Resident Evil fan, I'm excited to dive into this one myself, but before we do that, if you guys enjoy this video or it helps you out, then please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course hit that notification bell to support me. I really appreciate it as it really helps me out. Now that we got that nonsense out of the way, it's time to dive once again into the realm of survival horror and join Ethan Winters on his quest to become relevant. This is Resident Evil Village. Now as you guys will be watching my video, you may notice a face cam that doesn't match up with my audio. That's because most of the footage I use to make these guides is actually taken from my live streams. I livestream every week here on my channel where I trophy hunt my life away for your benefit and entertainment. So if watching me struggle to trophy hunt in real time interests you guys, then consider stopping by to hang out. Occasionally it's a fun time where shit like this happens every now and then. Hey! Oh my god, the travel ass! <laughs> hey, let's go! That's a dub right there. Hit Mother Miranda with the filthy nasty dude. Let's go. <laughs> the way this game's trophies are set up is essentially gonna play out like this. This video is gonna start off from the beginning of the game and it'll be designed with the player in mind. Simply follow along with the video to gather all collectibles in the game in order from when they become available. This way you won't miss anything and it'll be easy to keep track of what you have. As far as what difficulty to start on, this game requires several playthroughs to Platinum so I personally would recommend starting on Standard or Casual and then tackle the harder runs once you're familiar with the game. Once all the collectibles are out of the way, we'll tackle the other trophies needed as well as Mercenaries mode. So with that being said, let's take it from the top! Alright, so here we go. The first file we're gonna happen upon is the Fridge Memo. This is during the intro scene of the game. Next up's gonna be the old news clipping, which is once you get upstairs and you're in the process of putting Rose to bed. You could come into this side bedroom, which is opposite of the direction you're supposed to go. So there's that one. Next up, trophy goal! Move the ball from the Winters' bedroom into the study. This is very easy to do. You'll notice a ball as soon as you get in Rose's room. All you gotta do is just push it into the study which is just next door to Rose's room. So with some proper positioning, as you can see, boom, there we go. Uh, wait, not yet. There we go, now we got it. There you go, easy, easy peasy trophies, let's go. File, Ethan's diary. So this is actually in the study. All you gotta do is click on Ethan's computer. There you go, there's that one. And right next to that file, we're gonna find our next one, the medical checkup report in this drawer so there you go next up this is after the intro is finished playing out you will wake up after the car crash and the file will be right there at your feet next up we can get this trophy fairly quickly to use the photo mode this is going to be photographer so you're just going to want to go in the menu and basically follow the instructions when you try to take a picture it's going to tell you to go into um share mode to capture the screenshot I don't know why the feature incorporates share mode rather than being a separate thing. I thought that was pretty bizarre. I don't know if this is uh, specific to PS5 or if this is the case on all PlayStation consoles. Who knows? But that's how you get it on PS5. Next up, outhouse. So this is going to be the first outhouse. This is in the backyard of the very first house you happen upon in the village. It may be somewhat confusing to tell where we are in the footage but it's literally the first house you see. It's not hard to find. This is gonna be after the intro battle when you have to fight a million lichens and survive the timer. Uh, you come into this house and there's gonna be your note. 
as soon as you uh, get a little bit further after that note, you'll find your first goat of warding as well as a, uh, another file. That is both a file and a goat, so you do have to actually read the file below the goat in order to get that one. So there you go. And here's your next goat of warding immediately right after the first one. Going to be on the roof of the church that has the save point. So there you go. Next up, uh, literally like a few steps away from the last goat. The, the first three goats are very close in proximity. But this is when you're on your way to Louisa's house before you save the... Uh, before you're a good Samaritan and save the uh, random village people. Uh, and this is what, right after you meet the village people who ask you to break into Louisa's house. Uh, the outhouse is right here. I already opened it, but you do have to open that one in order for it to count for the trophy. Uh, and this is once you're inside Louisa's house, as soon as you enter, right next to the save point, you're gonna see uh, yet another file. There you go. And this is, uh, a little ways after that, so, uh, this is just before you meet Duke. There's a trophy to shoot down five crows that are flying, so you can't just shoot a crow. It's not enough to do that. You have to shoot them while they're actually flying. You, what you can do for this trophy is just restart checkpoint every time you shoot the crow and then shoot them again. And the game remembers the, the kill count, so you could just keep doing that to get your five kills rather quickly. It's a, it's a nice exploit to make things faster. This is also just before Duke, your next goat. There you go. Now, once you have access to the shop for the first time, you'll notice that Duke offers not only craftable item recipes, but also weapon mods for different guns. We're gonna need to buy all of these things for a couple of trophies, so whenever you see the Duke has new stock, just remember to buy these things from him whenever it is most convenient for you to do so. There's really no rush, just something to keep in mind. And this is once you've entered Castle Dumitresk. So your first file is going to be right at the entryway as soon as you enter. This is going to be in the save point, which you will most likely be visiting very often. There's your file right there. Next up is winemaking history. So this is on the upper floor of the main hall. You will have to come in this room, so you can't really miss it. This is after being chased by one of uh, Dummy Tresk's daughters. Uh, you will realize right where you are after this scene plays out. And then there's a file right in front of you as soon as you land. There you go. Next up, treatment candidates. So this is once you get to the basement area. This is right after you see the scene where um, uh, Alcina, you know, takes off with the bottle. Uh, and then this f next file right here is immediately after the first one. They're in very close proximity, only a few steps away. Trophy hooligan, break every window in Castle Dumitresk within a single playthrough. So this is, the, you'll be able to start doing this trophy as soon as you have slain one of Dumitresk's daughters, uh, which you have to do in order to progress. So there's your first window. I don't know if it counts the one that breaks like through plot. I don't know if that counts, but uh, so there's your one or two windows. That note's right next to the wine, which you have to pick up in order to progress, so there you go. Next up, Trophy Veteran Gunsmith equipped every gun with their customizable parts, so you'll find your first customizable part right there in that case, which you can add immediately. So these are optional, technically you can miss them. It's pretty hard to miss them if you're exploring thoroughly, but it is technically missable. Also this trophy, Petty Thief, unlock a simple lock with a lockpick. It's highly unlikely that you'd miss this trophy either, but uh, technically it is missable. You could ignore the locks and uh, not get the trophy, so this is me telling you to not do that, basically. So they put the lockpick right next to the lock, pretty hard to fuck this up. There you go, that's that one. So now we're going to be breaking more windows as soon as you come into this next room, immediately after the one we were just in. There's going to be two more windows, so there you go. That's that. We're going to be breaking even more windows. So this is after you come out of the courtyard. You'll see Alcina walking up the stairs right in front of you. As you can see, there's going to be three, or sorry, two more windows right there. So those are those ones. And then once you reach the top of the flight of stairs, you'll be on the second floor which is where we are now. We're gonna break three more windows. So there's one, walk up a bit further. There's two, walk up a bit further. And there's three, and there we go. 
I don't know how many winners we're at now. I lost count, but don't worry. We got them all so far. Here's your next goat. As soon as you come into the wine cellar, you'll see it right on the floor. Very hard to miss that one. So there you go. There's that goat. I like to save ammo, so I knife them. It takes longer, but I'm a hoarder. What can I say? So this is after you see the cutscene with Alcina talking on the phone with Mother Miranda. Boom. Shoot that window. I shot it from the outside. Also, that was the last one I was missing, but ignore that. You won't get the trophy yet like I did. Shoot two more in that very same room. There you go. That 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 first one I was shot, though, can only be shot from outside the bedroom, which is why I shot it from the outside. It's a little confusing, but that's the case. The file also in there, right after the cutscene. Here's the next file. As soon as you use uh, the key that you got from the room that Alicina was in, there's also going to be three windows in this room, so there you go. Three more to add to the count. There you go. And two more in the very next room. Uh, as well as a third window down the hall. There's going to be an enemy in this room, but that's where it is. So there you go. We almost got all the windows. Very close. Get the ball rolling. Solve a labyrinth. So there's also going to be a uh, key to a puzzle in this room, which you can loot. It's going to be that sphere right there. And you can take that sphere and run back to the save point room, which, of course, you will be doing often. But you just got to uh, complete this labyrinth. There are several of these in the game. First one's pretty damn easy. But the trophy is to complete one of them. Technically, they are optional, which is why I'm showing this. But there you go. You just have the ball go to the goal. And there you go. There's that trophy. Next up is the next file. Uh, you know downstairs or no sorry it's right here right in front of us right next to the windows we shot hell yeah now we go downstairs so this is where the piano is you need to complete that for the key item you will know where you are trust me it's uh due to these landmarks very easy to tell where shit is so there you go next up more windows this is further down once you pick up the mask that you need there's a window in this room don't forget to shoot it there you go and this is after you do the bell puzzle. Once you're in the secret passage way, we're going to climb up this ladder. And the goat's going to be immediately behind you. So there you go. There's that one. Hell yeah. There's a file up here too, so don't forget it. If that's even possible. Here, this trophy is to snipe an enemy from like a million miles away. There you go. Easy peasy. You get the sniper right before that scene. It's kind of hard to fuck it up. Here's another trophy. Combined treasures for the first time. So you find the ring in the room where you get the mask. And then once you have the iron key, I believe it's called the iron key. Yeah, or iron insignia key, sorry. You come back down to the cellar where you first fought the Moratias or whatever the hell the enemy's called. We're going to do this uh, mini puzzle. So it's going to require you to blow up the wall. There is a pipe bomb in this room, as you can see. I looted it from this room, so if you don't have one, that's how you get it. Now, I pushed the the um, the braziers into the fire. As you can see, I'm manually pushing them. But it's a lot easier if you shoot them. Uh, it moves much quicker and in greater uh, speeds. So I would recommend shooting. But you combine the ring with the eye, and there you go. That's going to be the first treasure you can combine. So there you go. we get a trophy for that. There's also a trophy to shove an enemy away after guarding. So this was when I first realized you can do this. Uh, which was after killing the final last daughter. Uh, you, you could have gotten that trophy much earlier than I did, but that was when I got it. So if you haven't got it yet, that's how you do it. Here's a file in the next save point right after the boss fight with Alcina. And there's also an outhouse right next to the save point. If we climb out the window, you will find the next outhouse. So there you go. That's outhouse number three. Right there. I know, crazy. Next, next go to warning. Uh, it's gonna be on the docks. As soon as you see, you'll see some lichens patrolling around here. Take them out. Uh, expertly dispatch them, and you'll see the go in this room. Very dark room, but if you're observant, you will see the goat. And of course, we gotta save the ammo on that one. Now, this is once you get back to the village after you talk to Duke. We're gonna, we now have the key to access the cemetery. So, there's your next goat behind one of the, uh, I don't know what the hell that thing's called, but yeah. 
That's where it is. Leonardo's matches. You have to come this way. You will see this house. And the file is as soon as you enter the house on the table. And that's where it is. I already looted up a bit in here, but we came back for the file. Don't worry. And the next outhouse is in the backyard of the house we were just in to loot Leonardo's file. So don't worry. Uh, this door is locked from the other side, but easy to get to if you walk through the house. But there you go. That's the outhouse. That's how you do it. And then the next house, uh, uh, bleh. the next outhouse is right after that. Immediately, there's gonna be a lichen right in front of this outhouse, but I already killed him, so he's dead. And then this is after the mini boss, the uh, I don't know, superior lichen, the one wearing the armor. This outhouse is right next to where he shows up, so there you go. You open that one, and this is gonna be another outhouse. You get a lot of outhouses here. Once you come into this uh, area, there you go. Pretty hard to miss this. It's right along the way you need to travel. So just open that up. And there's also going to be a file on the outside of this house. Yes, normally you have to shoot the lock. I showed the outhouse first, but you do have to shoot a lock to get in here. And uh, my order of things is a little messed up, but you know what? Don't worry about that. We're, we're, we're still showing everything. But there you go. There's that file. Next, go to warning. Same place, just outside the house we just picked up the file in the outhouse. There you go, all in the same place. And now is our next outhouse. So we're gonna use the key once again. Open that door, climb up the ladder. Very easy, very peasy, easy peasy. And we're gonna climb up here, drop down into the next yard over, and there you go, there's the next outhouse. We only need two more. We only need two more. Very easy. So this is after you get the key. Uh, the next part of the key. Uh, you need that for the story, so it's very hard to miss this. That was the last file I missed, so that's why the trophy popped. But You know what? I feel ashamed. The, la the, the last file I needed was one I missed that was right next to a story item. So that's pretty shameful. And, of course, the church computer. If you go back in the church where the save point was, there will be a new file. Here we go. This is right before you get to Donna's house. You can shoot that goat. And this is immediately at Donna's house, instead of going inside, if you come around this way, into her side yard here. This house is beautiful. Like, can you imagine being on, on the cliffside of a waterfall, having your house there? That's fucking amazing. That, that's gorgeous. And this is after the entire house section. You will be able to, this is on your way back to the village. Uh, we can come back now. And, uh, yeah. There's gonna be a, what, uh, a new gun in here. You have to actually loot this gun. You can't purchase it in the shop. Or maybe you can purchase it. Who knows? Maybe further in the game, he'll the Duke will sell it if you happen to miss it. But that's where you get it. So you don't have to buy it. You can just loot it there. And this is just before we get back to the village. If you come this way around the house, you will find your next outhouse. And now we only need one more outhouse for the trophy. We're very close. And you will also find your next file as well as a key we're gonna need in this house right next to the outhouse. So there you go, there's a save in here. Pretty easy to recognize where you are due to the landmark. There's that key, we're gonna need that. And the file. That key is for the house that uh, is right here on the map. So we're gonna come back to this house in the village once we're finished in that area. Punch in this password. We're gonna open this shit up. And there's gonna be a weapon mod in here that we need. There is a trophy to get every weapon mod in the game and combine it with every gun that it can be combined with. But there's also gonna be some treasure in here, so it's definitely worth coming over here to get this stuff. Definitely gonna wanna do that. But there you go. There you go. Mod free sniper, hell yeah. You can only find these things, you can't buy them. At least to my assumption. So this is a, you, you'll eventually see this happen. This has to happen as you progress through the game. There's a file in this house. On the dead guy. There you go. There's that one. I don't want to pick that up. There you go. Easy. 
And this is once we get to the reservoir, so this is going to be the next big area that we have to accomplish in the game. This is right before you hop on the motorboat. There's going to be a file in here, so don't forget to grab that. And if you haven't gotten this trophy yet, Strategist, defeat at least three enemies with one attack. This is a great spot to do so. Many enemies show up at this area. Uh, and as you can see, I throw down a pipe bomb, kill three enemies at once. Easy uh, peasy. So that's a great spot to do that if you haven't already. If you don't have a pipe bomb, you could craft it. Also, we're going to get our last outhouse. So as soon as you come out the uh, area where you have to turn on the power, uh, you, it's very hard to miss that. As you can see on the map, you do have to come this way. Very hard to miss it. Here's the next file. In this dead car. There you go. Easy uh, peasy. There's also some chickens. You could kill them too. Alright, your next goat. This is right before you go down the ladder to proceed through the area. There you go. Just come around this bend. Can't miss him. And next up, this is uh, during your when you're trying to be eaten by the fish, as you can see on the map. Right in the middle of the reservoir, you can find this goat of boarding. You will have to snipe it. An easy one to miss if you're not uh, paying attention. And uh, further in through the uh, reservoir, this is right before the boss fight with Moreau. You can open this drawer, grab a file. That's the next one, and there's also another weapon part for your uh, automatic pistol, which I didn't actually show us pick up the pistol, but uh, you have to open the cabinet that it's in in order to progress the story, so if you didn't pick it up, it's your own fucking fault, alright? But there we go, there's the next file right after uh, you talk to Heisenberg on the TV. And this is after we've... Uh, killed Moreau, the water level will be lower now, so you can actually come back to where we first got on the speedboat, and the water is going to be clear, so we can actually make our way down here. This was not accessible prior to the Moreau boss fight, so that's why we came back down here. And our next go to warning is going to be right there, so there you go. That's that one. And this is also an optional area, you have to use the crank to access this area, but... You would have the crank by this point. Also, there's a lichen in this room, so don't be afraid. You don't see him on my capture, but he is there. You will have to kill him. And the wolf's mane. We will need to loot that weapon because it has weapon mods. Trophy, medium rare, set fire to Moratia. Once you have the crank, you'll be able to access this area. So you're going to want to come back to the docks. This is right next to where Duke is at in the village. Hop on the boat. And this is uh, due north of the river that the boat is on. So we're going to come through here. We're going to come into this completely optional area. You'll know you're in the right place. Once you see this happen, you can shoot this thing, which I would highly recommend doing in order to light the torches. So there you go. That's going to open the room on the right. And the Mauritius will infinitely spawn. Uh, that's a Mauritia right there, in case you're not sure. Or Moroish. More, more Moroica? I don't, I'm, I'm butchering the name most likely, but... You could set fire to him if he touches the torch. Shoot the torch into him if he doesn't touch it himself. That That's a trophy. That's how you do it. Now, this is on the southbound side of the river. You take the boat the opposite direction. You'll find that weapon part, as well as a file. So there you go. And now this is right next to the church in the village. Once you come back here at this point, you will find this newly spawned mini boss. He's completely optional, although very tough to kill. He takes quite a few bullets. He has a lot of health. But if you can manage to bring this guy down, uh, not only will you get a decent chunk of money for it, but uh, you'll also get a trophy, more importantly. Because that's what we're in it for. We're, we're trying to platinum. So let's, let's get our priorities straight. All right? Trophy before money. There we go. That's how you do that. And next up, go to warding. So this is before you enter the lichen's den. It's an optional direction. You don't have to come here, but you should. So this is uh, north side of the village. Furthest north as you can go. Otto's Mill. Just check the map. You'll know you're in the right place. There's the next goat. Come into the building. That's right next to that goat. You don't have to kill a big guy. I didn't show it, but files right after you kill him 
And now this is right when you uh, have to go the way you're supposed to go for the story. So we're going to come this way. And there's a trophy we can get. Flat, fast reflexes, knock a flaming arrow out of the sky with close combat weapon. So you'll have to knife one of these arrows. There's archers here, which makes it perfect for your opportunity. You, you uh, swing early enough and boom, as you can see, not that difficult. Now this is... Uh, when you're mostly done, the like and then the go to warning is just before the boss fight, so there you go. And then as you're making your way to the last save in the area, which is just before the boss fight, you make your way in here, there's going to be a file on the floor right next to the save, so there you go. That's that one. And then, file experiments. This is after you've defeated the boss of the area, but before you get back to the village, you can find this one in the basement, just follow where I am on the map, you'll find it. So this is once you get to the factory, trophy, quit hanging around, shoot down a soldat in the production line, very easy, there you go, as soon as you get here, just do that, easy peasy. File, development note, you have to come through this door to make your way through the factory, once you do, you'll open this case to get your cog mold, you have to get this in order to progress, and the file's right next to it. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Go to warding. So this is once you've taken the elevator to the second floor. The goat is, as you can see, right up on your height. Uh, on the support beams of the elevator shaft. So there you go. There's that one. Uh, you have to come this way. This is immediately after you fight the jetpack enemies. You can get that note. Actually, I might be crazy. We might not have seen the jetpack enemies yet. Uh, but you definitely would have seen that part. This goat is right next to that. Once you're almost killed by the turbine. And this is before the boss fight of the factory. This is at the very end of the factory. You come in this room. And you can get an optional note. Woohoo! Now this is after you defeated Sturm. Which is the boss of the area. You can come in this room and grab this file. Right next to the cigar. Which is worth money. Don't know why. It was already lit. Who would want to buy a cigar that was already fucking lit? But anyways... You crawl in this vent, r immediately after picking up that last file next to the cigar. Uh, this room is just neighboring that room, and there you go, that's that goat. And this is right after you talk to Chris in the story, in the save room. There you go, this is your next file. whoop the fucking do And then your next goat is going to be quite further than that once you finish, or almost finish, Chris's section. This is after he has his little own boss fight. You can come over here and shoot this goat. That's incredibly hard to see, but it is there. So just fire off blindly into the darkness, and boom, there's going to be all your goats of warding. Hell yeah! That's all of them. And then this is going to be, at the very ass end of Chris's gameplay, there's a bunch of files in this room. So there's going to be a file on each of the bosses in the game that you can read. So there's the first one on Moreau. second one's right next to it on Dummy Tresk. Next one's for Heisenberg. I thought Heisenberg's file was fucking hilarious. Mother Miranda was basically like, Heisenberg is the most powerful, best uh, fucking subject out of all of them. But you know what? I don't like him, so fuck him. And that was basically what the note said. It was fucking funny. Just because Mother Miranda's playing favorite, she's like, nah, fuck this guy. He's, he's perfect in every way, but fuck him. I don't like him. I don't like the cut of his jib. But there you go. That's all those files. And that's going to be every single collectible in the game! So now we can move on to the other trophies. Now that we've finished our first playthrough of the game, now we can start talking about the several different types of playthroughs of the game that you'll have to complete. You will have unlocked Village of Shadows difficulty by this point, if you hadn't already had it, but I truly wouldn't recommend playing it just yet. There's a gun you're going to want that makes the run infinitely easier, and we're going to have to get that gun first. In the meantime, I would recommend grabbing some of the other trophies while gathering as much money throughout your run as possible, because you're going to need a shit ton of it for upgrades and weapon mods. There's a trophy for beating the game using only a melee weapon, so you're going to want to buy the Karambit knife from the bonus shop. Don't worry, it's cheap as fuck, you'll have enough. This knife is stupidly powerful and makes the run a breeze. Although if you haven't already, I'd recommend finishing every craftable dish you can eat from Duke, because they really help make this run more achievable. 
Lastly, the other thing to note is that there are points in the game where you physically cannot progress through the game unless you fire your gun. But don't worry, the game is smart enough to acknowledge those sections, and when you do fire your gun, it doesn't void the trophy. If you want to be really safe, you can always go into your challenge menu and check to see if, if you fucked up the challenge at any time. Always check before you save your game, and if you did fuck up, then just load your last save. Easy. Aside from that, just play on casual difficulty, and it's really not that hard. It's quite easy, actually. In fact, it's so easy that you can get the trophy to use no more than four health items in the same run if you wanted to. That's what I did, and I'm not kidding when I say this, but I literally didn't need to use health until the final boss. The reason for this is because even if you're put into danger, your health slowly regenerates. And since enemies are slower on casual, you'll find yourself near impossible to kill, especially if you've crafted every dish at Duke. Not only that, but you can also grab the trophy to spend no more than 10,000 lay in the same run as well, netting you three trophies at once for one run. I mean, if you think about it, this trophy goes hand in hand with the knife trophy. Since you're only using the knife the whole run, you don't need to spend money, so it all works out. This trophy is pretty straightforward to get. The only trophy you may not want to group with your knife run is the beat the game under three hours trophy. Like I said, it's totally doable, and you can if you want to, but for me personally, I wanted to take my time on the knife run and loot every treasure in the game to make sure I had enough to fully upgrade the stake. And grabbing all the treasures gets time consuming, so it didn't make sense to me to get this alongside the knife run. At the end of the day, I divvy up the runs the way you like and do whatever is best for you and most convenient. Beating the game in under three hours is very achievable, and by this point, you'll know the game inside and out, so there's, there should be no issue with this one if you're playing on casual difficulty. Whenever you can, however, make sure you purchase the stake from Dude. This is the gun we're going to be using throughout our Village of Shadows run. You're going to want to fully upgrade it so that you can purchase infinite ammo for it. However, obviously don't do this during your under 10,000 lay run. This is going to cost a shitload of money to fully upgrade, so make sure you grab as many treasures as possible. Lastly, once you beat the game, Duke will also sell an assault rifle once you purchase it from the bonus shop. You'll have to buy this weapon since it can be modded and we need all weapon mods for a trophy. Not only that, but you will also be able to buy the recipe for crafting the ammo for the WCX, uh, the assault rifle. So you're going to want to buy that and now that we have that recipe, we can actually nab ourselves another trophy so this is going to be lucky number 7 to have at least 777 lay in your position, possession, sorry. Now, you're really gonna wanna make sure you have zero lay in your inventory. And then what you do is you craft exactly 120 bullets. Now, in order to get zero lay, you're just gonna have to keep buying and selling ammo until it eventually hits zero. There's gonna be some math involved. It's gonna be somewhat frustrating, but uh, I believe in you guys. I believe you can do it. And then what you're going to want to do once you've crafted that 120 is you're going to want to sell uh, one full stack of 100 bullets and then exactly 11 more bullets. So that's 111 bullets. It's going to give you exactly 777 lay. So go ahead and sell that to the Duke and boom, there's your trophy. That's how you get that one. Now once we've gotten all those trophies out of the way, it's time for your Village of Shadows run. Now this run normally would be quite frightening, but with your infinite stake, it's really not. This gun is the be-all end-all, and it deals so much damage that you literally don't need any other weapon. Take your time through the run, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. Other than that, there's not much to say about this run. The infinite ammo makes it easy as shit. What you can do, however, if you haven't done it already, is shoot the shit out of Urius in the intro battle, because there's a trophy to do that if you haven't done that yet. And also, once you have finished your Village of Shadows playthrough, you are going to have to play a small portion of another playthrough just until you can get to Duke, and he's going to be selling the Rocket Pistol, which is a brand new weapon that we unlocked for beating that mode. You can also buy the recipe to craft its ammo, and with that, that is going to be every single recipe in the game. You should have them all by now. And not only that, but we can also nab ourselves the trophy to craft one of every single item in the game 
So there we go, that's how you do that. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna go into the bonus shop and we're gonna buy every single concept art and every weapon model and character model. Uh, this will take a while, but uh, once you've uh, looked at them all at least once, you can do this very quickly just by mashing the button, uh, you will nab yourself two separate trophies for doing each of those. And once you've completed everything there is to do in story mode, that just leaves mercenaries. You can purchase this mode in the bonus shop if you haven't already. Now this mode offers a degree of challenge that could possibly gatekeep your platinum. It's not the easiest thing in the world to do, but basically there's a trophy to S rank every single stage in mercenaries. There are eight stages in total, and the last four get pretty damn difficult, however not impossible. Basically what it came down to was me getting good RNG. So if you want to copy me, then you better start praying to RNG Jesus, cause you'll be at it for a while. Basically the trick is, you ignore enemies until you find your first perk. Then you pray it has what you want, and if not, then you reset. This gets pretty tedious if you're unlucky, but trust me, it is worth it, because this build is basically so strong that it eliminates most of the difficulty. Mainly you're looking for the Masamune perk, which increases your knife damage with a 10 times damage multiplier. Combine this with close combat for a combined 15 times damage multiplier, as well as any thick skinned perks or super guards, and suddenly you're taking next to no damage and quite literally one shotting almost every enemy, and trust me, I'm not exaggerating. Combine that with a bit of practice and memorization of enemy placement, and you're looking at a recipe for success! But for your convenience, if my description of this isn't enough, and you want to watch the master at work, then I made this video of me S-ranking every stage. So if you want a more detailed guideline on how to execute this strategy, then feel free to make use of it, because hey, that's why I made it. I hope it helps, and best of luck to you guys on your mercenaries run. And with that being said, that's going to be every single trophy in Resident Evil Village. But thank you guys so much for watching. And if this video helped you guys out, then please be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe, and of course hit that notification bell to support me. I'd really appreciate that. And of course, don't forget to check out my other Path to Platinum guides for more trophies. That being said, I'm out, take care everybody, and I will definitely see you in the next one.